and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, thank you so very much for clicking on this video. So today is going to be part two of my semi-series on self-taught beauty. If you have not seen part one, I will tag it up above here for you to go check out. I do recommend it, especially if you are not super familiar with self-taught beauty story or how everything got to be the way it is now. Today, however, in part two, we are going to be addressing some of the main concerns that I've noticed within the comments section of her videos, my videos, some also via email, and we're gonna talk about it. I am also gonna give my own thoughts and opinions on these concerns as well. Before we get into it though, I do wanna say that this video is completely my own thoughts and opinions. This is not a hate video, you guys, so please do not go show hate to anyone mentioned in today's video. I say this all the time, but I really am a huge believer that we as people can have a conversation without being nasty. We can share our opinions on things and our thoughts without just being disgusting, nasty people. So I do just want to make it perfectly clear that that is not what this video is for. I literally never delete comments because I do want you guys to use that section to share your thoughts and opinions on things. That's why it's there. And I love hearing what you guys have to say, even when you do disagree with me. And I will say my people are amazing. You guys are always respectful. You share your thoughts in a respectful way. And I appreciate you so, so much. But in the last video, there was a couple of people that were being very, very nasty about Mandy and her deceased son. And they were saying some very negative and just disgusting things. And I definitely removed those comments because I just do not advocate for that. I think, you know, it's one thing to share how you feel about something. And it's a completely another for talking about someone who is deceased or talking negatively about someone's deceased son. Like, I don't know why in the world anyone would ever want to do that, but I just want to make it very clear that I do not support that behavior. And if those types of comments are left in the comment section, I'm going to delete it. Moving on though, let's go ahead into the first main concern that I have seen literally across the board, you guys, and that is those animals. For those of you who've seen part one, you may have seen Mandy does have a puppy. She does also have some cats as well. I do not know how many. I know at one point she had eight cats, but I don't know if she still has eight cats. Nonetheless, she definitely has multiple animals in that little shed, and a lot of people are extremely concerned for those animals. Being in such small living quarters like that and them heating with kerosene is a huge concern for a lot of people. The fumes themselves could really make those animals sick, and I do agree that that is very, very risky for those animals, and unfortunately, when it comes to pets and animals like that, they have no say-so. They have no control over their living condition or anything of the nature. It's up to the owner to take care of them and make sure they're getting the nutrition and health that they need. We already have three adults living in this small area and then you have multiple animals as well. So there's not much room in this little shed for anyone to even move or breathe, to be honest. And I don't know if she takes the animals out throughout the day or if they're able to roam, but if not, then that's really sad because animals need to be able to get fresh air, especially when you're in small quarters like that with those kerosene fumes, like they need to be able to get out of that shed and get some fresh air. So that is a huge concern concern of mine. It's really heartbreaking too because the animals have no control, you guys, and I think that's what's the saddest about it. I know Mandy would never intentionally hurt an animal. I know she is an animal lover, but sadly in this situation, she is kind of hurting them because they have no control over the situation. It is not a good living environment for Mandy and her boys, so it definitely isn't for the animals. And on the flip side of that, having animals for Mandy and the boys isn't, in my opinion, isn't a good idea either because 
bless their hearts, right now, they can't hardly take care of themselves. That is a lot on Mandy and the boys to figure out. And they really shouldn't have to at this point. They should have to only worry about themselves. So the fact that they have all these other animals, it is a main concern for the animals' well-being and for Mandy and the boys' well-being. It's really just a bad situation. There was actually a comment on my last video that I thought really went into detail on how dangerous having these animals in these conditions really can be. So I'm gonna read that to you really quick. Operating a kerosene heater in an enclosed area produces fumes that are toxic to dogs. Unless the area is properly ventilated, the fumes can cause your dog to become sick, very sick. Dogs who are exposed to kerosene fumes almost always require emergency treatment. And this is one, like I said, across the board, people were really concerned about this. It makes sense to be concerned about it. It's not good for Mandy and the boys. It's definitely not good for the animals. And it's sad because Mandy and the boys could go to a homeless shelter. Mandy just doesn't want to be separated, which is fine. And that is her prerogative. She can do whatever she wants. But with these animals, they do not have a choice. They're stuck in this situation, whether they want to be or they don't. Noxious fumes from a kerosene heater increases the risk of nasal tumors in dogs. The fumes are absorbed through the mucous membranes. Dogs with long, thin muzzles tend to breathe through their noses and consequently are more at risk of developing nasal tumors than dogs who have wide, short muzzles. Breathing the toxic fumes from the kerosene heater replaces the air in your dog's lungs and burns his mucous membranes. No oxygen is transported to your dog's brain, causing seizures and irrational behavior. Your dog's gums may turn gray and then white, which indicate a lack of oxygen. The list literally just goes on and on and on. These fumes from those kerosene heaters can cause so much damage to all the animals, not just the dog, cause a huge change in their behavior and cause some serious damage internally to their organs. So it is a really, really sad situation. And I know, like I said before, Mandy is an animal lover. She loves her animals, but at what cost, honestly? Like that is a big concern of mine as well. And it just really does suck for those animals because it could cause them so many issues. Another huge main concern that people have had is the fact that it's been over two years and Mandy still does not have her ID. In the beginning, I don't think that many people question it because she did lose all of her documents in the house fire. So it made sense that she didn't have an ID for the first little while. In the interview I done with her in part one, she did admit there was a point in time where she really just got extremely overwhelmed. She was really, really stressed out and she just kind of gave up. Which, honestly, I'm just going to say this, I do understand. I've been in positions like that where I've just been extremely overwhelmed. And instead of changing the situation, I kind of just lay down and took it for a while. I do understand how she could kind of get into that position where she don't know what to do and just throws her hands up. I do understand that. But it has been two years and that is an extended amount of time. I believe you guys, once again, this is just my opinion, but I believe Mandy's been in that state of mind of just throwing her hands up the whole time. You know, she's got a lot on her plate. She has a lot going on. So being overwhelmed is going to come with the territory, but I think that she just doesn't know how to get out of this position. And instead of being consistent and trying every day, that takes a lot of effort. Fortunately, I think Mandy has just been in this mindset of, oh, well, I can't really change the situation, so I'm just going to lay down and take it. And I think she's been there in that mindset for, for a really, really long time. Another thing that she mentioned was because of the pandemic, you have to actually make appointments with your DMV in order to go and get your license or do anything at the DMV. And I will say it is like that here where I live as well. You do have to make an appointment just a couple of weeks ago. My husband had some business he had to take care of with the DMV and it did take him a couple of days to get through, but he called consistently every single day until he got through. So it is possible, but it is something you have to be consistent about. I'm not going to sit here and say that Mandy has not tried, but I am going to say, I, in my opinion, I don't believe that Mandy has been consistent. The situation that Mandy is in right now, it's going to take hard work and consistency 
every single day in order for her to get out of this situation. And sometimes it's easier just to throw your hands up and take it than to actually do something about it. And in my opinion, I think that's kind of where Mandy is. Instead of fighting for it. She's kind of just accepted the situation she's in. I don't think that this is the life that she wants, but at the same time, I think that she just doesn't even know where to begin to make it better. Another thing I've noticed that people have been really concerned about is those boys and why those boys don't do more than they do to help out. I did question Mandy about the boys and what they do to really help and, you know, what their plans are for the future, that type of thing. I did ask her those in the interview. Y'all, I cannot control what her answers are. You know, this is her story. She's going to answer things the way she does. Mandy did say that they do a lot around there to help her out around the shed. They do a lot of work. They'll walk up to the neighbors, do different things to try to find odd and end work. Allegedly, they have all went and tried to put in applications around them at different stores and shops, things like that. In that first video, Mandy admitted that she has babied them boys to another level due to just different things going on in her life, losing her first son that really just made her want to cling on to her boys even harder. And I understand that fully as a mother, you don't want to let your kids go. And that's just part of being a parent. But with that being said, at the same time, these boys are not kids anymore. They're 18 and 20 years old and she still treats them like children. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that Mandy relies on them boys to give her a reason to even get up in the mornings, you guys. I truly believe that. And I think that Mandy has an extreme amount of guilt within her when it comes to the boys. She's mentioned many times in the past that their childhood was a little rough because her and her husband did argue a lot and she feels bad that they had to go through that as children and hear the fussing and the fighting constantly. And I think she has a lot of guilt over that along with the situation they're currently in. I think she feels really guilty for the fact that they are in that situation and she feels like she did this to these boys. And so she just babies them and babies them and babies them. On the boys' side, though, you know, most average kids about that age, they're ready to kind of spread their wings and fly and figure out what they want in life and do different things. But I think when it comes to these boys, they're 20 and 18 years old, but mentally, I don't believe they are 20 or 18 years old. They still depend on their mom to do a lot for them. And I think it's just because literally this dynamic that they've got has been this way for a really long time. The boys have not been given an opportunity to really spread their wings and fly because Mandy is right there babying them. In an average family, the parents are usually trying to push the kids in a direction, whether it's going to college or going and finding a job, whatever the situation is. Once you hit a certain age, your mom, your dad are usually like, hey, so uh, what's your future after high school? What do you plan on doing after this? You know, that type of thing. That is a normal dynamic. But I think with Mandy and the boys been in this very weird dynamic for so long, it's not like your normal family. So the boys still very much rely on their mom to do things for them and they expect their mom to do things for them. And Mandy relies on the boys to even give her motivation to get up every day. That's what I think. Because I mean, think about it, you guys. What is Mandy going to do when the boys do get mature and they do leave because one day they will hopefully and then Mandy's going to be sitting there left with nothing to motivate her to continue moving forward in life and with the boys if they don't get out of this mindset then they're going to sit there their whole life depending on their mom and God forbid it but what if something happened to her they're going to be left in this situation not knowing what to do with their lives and it's really really sad you guys I think, in my opinion, the family needs therapy sessions. I think there needs to be a therapist talking to them, talking them through this process because it's going to be a process and it's good, it's not going to happen overnight. There's a lot that needs to happen here. They need to be independent people and I don't believe anyone in that shed is independent. I think they all rely on one another to get through every day and 
It's not a healthy situation by no means. And another concern that a lot of people have had is the fact that Mandy has been asking for donations for over two years now. People have brought up the fact that she plays this like sad music in her videos and uses the power of empathy to benefit her. Also, once again, known as sad fishing. So I have mixed emotions about this part because I understand her asking for donations, but at the same time, I do think that if you're going to do these life updates and you're going to share your struggles, then you need to be 100% transparent with your audience. She already shares a lot of her life, but instead of making those excuses, she just needs to be honest. Why hasn't this got done? Well, because I've been lazy. Why... Why do the boys not do more? Oh, well, because I baby them. She needs to do that so much more. A lot of the built up frustration is because of all the excuses. Instead of just being real and instead of just being honest, you know, she does say, well, it's because of this, this, and this. And I'm not saying that those are all quote unquote excuses, but a lot of them are. And, you know, people get frustrated. They see that. They see that she's not really answering the question. She's just kind of skating around it and answering the question with an excuse. And people get frustrated. But with that being said, at the same time, I think that what she's doing is a great thing when it comes to sharing her story. Um, and when it comes to the donations, I have mixed feelings about it. I think that she definitely could use the donations right now. But she really just needs to be truthful and honest with her viewers. I have noticed in her last few videos, she has been way more transparent. So hopefully that will continue. And as long as she continues doing that, I don't think what she's doing is necessarily bad. As long as she's actually fighting to make her situation better and she's being truthful with her viewers, then I don't see a problem with it. And that's just kind of how I feel about it. I do want to say this kind of leads me into something else that I wanted to mention. For those of you out there that have gotten emotionally invested into Mandy and her story. Trust me, I understand. I totally get it. It's very easy to get emotionally invested into someone's story like this. Number one, Mandy is very likable. She's very kind. Hard not to feel empathetic for her and her boys because the situation is heartbreaking and Mandy is such a sweetheart. She really is such a sweetheart. And so I totally understand why someone would get emotionally invested in wanting to see them do better. I also understand for those of you who have supported her in any way, sent her donations, you know, to help her and then see nothing really change. I understand how that could be frustrating. For example, Mandy gets on, she says that she needs $300 for something. So you send her the $300 and you say, hey, take this and, and get the thing that you need. And then the next video, nothing has changed and she doesn't even mention it. She doesn't even act like it happened. And it doesn't only hurt you, but it also frustrates you because you're trying to help her, but she's not doing anything with it. Or at least that's how it feels. But when it starts to mess with you and your mental health, that's when you need to take a step back and just reevaluate things. You have to remind yourself that this is Mandy's life. And in all reality, you guys, we don't even really know Mandy. We only know what she has allowed us to know. So when, when you start to get emotionally invested in that way to where it's actually causing you anger and frustration to an extreme level, that's when you need to step back and remind yourself that you have no control over this woman's life or what she does with her life. You can be concerned. You can have questions, but you can't allow it to mess with your own mental health. Well, some of you guys may know Eugenia Cooney. I used to follow her and, and literally watch every single video that she would upload. I got extremely emotionally invested in Eugenia's journey and just wanting to see her get better. Seeing her constantly in denial and every single week, week after week, getting sicker and sicker, it affected me in my mental health. And it finally got to a point where I had to step away and remind myself that 
this is not my story. I have no control over what this woman does with her life. And if you can't accept that, if that's something you can't accept and continue supporting or continue watching, sometimes the best thing you can do is take yourself out of the equation. Always come back a couple of months later for an update. See how they're doing. See if anything's changed. But you cannot allow yourself to get that emotionally invested into someone else's life. You have to take care of yourself first and your mental health. And you cannot allow someone else and their story to affect you mentally. That is it for this video. Please let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. I love hearing what you guys have to say. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel and tapping the bell for post notifications. That way you are notified every single time I upload. I appreciate you guys too. The moon and stars and... Until next time, guys. Bye.